Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how you can give your cartoon animator character's hair more life by adding spring bones. Hi there, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist or the Lazy Animator. And in this video I'm going to take this character that you can see on the screen here, which is an avatar of myself. It's a G3 360 head character and it's a raster based character and as you can see the hair on this character is just crying out to have spring bones added so that it has a more natural and lifelike bouncy look to it when the character moves its head around so that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video uh, it's going to be hopefully a quick demo just showing you how to add spring bones to an existing character to sort of make them more lifelike if you like so just with this character I've set up a quick looping animation just to show you what it looks like at the moment. So I'll just quickly play that. You can see there the character's just dancing and swinging his head around and the hair isn't really doing much of anything at all. And you can imagine if we add some spring bones so that this hair can sort of flop around and fly around as he moves his head, uh, it's going to look a whole lot better. So if you're not familiar with spring bones, uh, this is a new feature for Cartoon Animator 5 where you can add these spring bones into your character and software itself will do all the dynamics of actually animating that once you've set it up. It's literally almost a set and forget kind of feature. So you can see here uh, this character's skirt has all got spring bones in and all of this animation is just happening automatically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a duplicate of this character just to get started so that we can compare at the beginning and the end. Press the control key, duplicate the character, move that over there, move this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the animation off of this, so remove animation so that's completely without any animation now. We don't get any problems with the software complaining that it's got animation on it while we're messing around with the bones. So now I'm going to take this character into the composer mode and while I do this I'm going to take my face off the screen so that I don't get in the way of anything that we might be doing. So first up I'm going to zoom in on my character's face. And what I want to do to start with is put spring bones in the hair up here. So I could go into the bone editor here. You want to select the actual bone that you want to start adding your bones to. And just start adding where you think you want the bones to go. So I want this hair to sort of flop around. I'm going to go to there. I'm going to right click, stop that. Now I want to do this side, so I'm going to select that bone. Should be able to mirror these. Let's see if we just go mirror. There we go. So I've got the same bones on both sides now. And that's pretty much all I need. I think I might be able to just move this bone here a little bit just to make sure it's on the sprite itself. So the next thing all we want to do is open up the spring bone editor here. And we want to put these into groups. Uh, so you don't want, you can see we've got in the spring editor, we've got the default group here. You don't particularly want to put anything in that. It's just there for the sake of it. We've got include child bones and we've got all these presets and then we've got all the down here where we can make adjustments to those presets. And in the layer manager here, you can see we've got uh, all of these bones here that we can select. You'll see they're coming up on the screen and they don't actually have any sprites in because this is the sprite for those bones. So what I want to do is I want to get all the sprites on this side and put them into a group. So, right, so all of those we want to assign to a group. So, first we've got to add a group, like so, and we give the group a name by double clicking it. And this is going to be uh, this character's right front here. So, I'm just going to call it right front here. And now all the bones that we have selected we can assign to that group. And then we want to do the same on the other side. So we'll select those bones there, add another group, double click, and we'll go left front group or left front here. And we'll assign those bones to that group. 
what you can see now the left side all of these bones part of that group and the right side all of these bones are part of that and now all we have to do is set the properties of the spring bones so i'm going to start with this one uh, if you're not familiar with bones the direction of this arrow indicates the direction of the child bones from the previous bone so we've got here this is the main bone and then this is a child bone of this bone as is this one here and this bone is the parent bone to this one and this is the parent bone to that one and so on so if I select that bone and make sure include child bones is selected now I go down here and I choose whichever ones of the whichever preset I want or I could actually just go into here I'm just going to do rubbery for now and click on that so you'll see so you see this bone everything down here has gone back to the default so if I select over here it changes to the settings of whatever preset that I set on it I now want to go over here and do the same thing make sure include child bones is selected and I'll do rubbery for that and it doesn't look like anything's happening but I can assure you it has if we do preview now and start moving the hair around you can see now my hair has got some more natural movement when I'm moving it around. If we wanted to, we could try some of the other settings just by choosing one of these. So let's say weighted, light, stretchy, squashy. Let's see what fast does. Change both of these to fast and then give it a preview. Doesn't look a whole lot different. It's not quite as springy, I think. Uh, I'm going to change them back to rubbery and just go with the default settings for that. And as I said, you can adjust all the properties for the selected bones down here. There's all different sorts of things. You can give it more gravity, speed, bounciness, and sort of limit how far things swing, like whether they go clockwise or counterclockwise, and how far in each direction they can go. But I'll leave, I'll leave that setting there. Just do a quick preview again see just for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and do this back hair here and these side bits and then we're going to go back uh, onto the stage and we'll see what sort of difference this makes so shut down that for now and I want to do the back hair but uh, everything's a little bit hard to see so I'm going to turn if I can turn the head off so I can just see the back hair there we go Make sure that's selected and start adding bones. Uh, the only part of the back hair that I want to swing around is this bottom bit. Uh, all the rest of this is pretty much hidden most of the time. And I don't want a whole lot of movement down here. Right, so that's my bones for that. Back into spring bones. And we're going to create another group. Just going to call back here. Assign those to that group. I'm going to select this bone and we'll give that rubbery as well. And select this bone and we'll give that one rubbery and we'll do a preview of that. There you go, you can see the bottom of the hair has got a little bit of bounce to it now. Turn my face back on. And the last thing I want to do is the ears. Let's see what we can do. Spring bones, and we'll do two more groups. Group one will be right here. Group 
two will be left here. Sign those to left here, so that's good. Sign those in there. We need to do the same over here. Click those ones and assign them right here. We just need to set that into the same settings, so we'll give it that bone rubbery. And do the same over here, rubbery. We'll do a quick preview. You can see it's got a little bit of rubber effect happening there. Affecting the ear a little bit, but I don't think it's that big a deal. You only really notice it when I'm really getting in the extremes there. So there we go. That's all of the spring bones I'm going to add into this head. So we'll get out of here now. Go back to stage mode. And this is the character with all the spring bones in. So at the moment, if you remember that original animation, it's not a lot happening with the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this same animation, which I've got saved as a perform motion over here. And we can both be surprised at how that's going to look once I apply it. So let's see, make sure that character's selected. Double click this and let's see what happens. So there you go. What I might do just get into the timeline in this one. And look at the motion file. I'm just going to slightly dagger this clip. Let's see. I'm going to break the clip there. I'm going to add some frames on the end. Take this up to 300 for the minute. 3,300, so I get a few extra frames. And I'm going to do that there. Bring this up to here. to 70. So we'll just have a look at what that looks like. So obviously I could do a lot to tweak that and make it look a little more natural. It's probably too much going on in terms of his hair flopping around. But just as an exercise in showing you how to add spring bones to a character's hair, uh, I hope you found this informative. So there you go, I hope you found that informative as a demonstration of the new Cartoon Animator 5 spring bones. Uh, as you saw there, they don't just have to be added or just have to be limited to vector characters. They work perfectly fine on the older G3 PSD raster based characters. And they're really easy to set up. It's literally, once you get them working how you want them to, it's set and forget in terms of the animation that it adds to your projects. It's pretty much you can focus on animating the character, doing whatever they're doing, and secondary animations such as what I showed you today with the hair sort of flying around is all completely automated for you. So there you go. I'm going to leave it at that until the next one. Uh, bye for now.